the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may know the hope of your calling Yeshua's mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of applause as we take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen and amen. He is coming again. We want to take this moment and time to welcome all those who are watching us live uh, through Instagram, through Facebook, be it YouTube, uh, uh, in any social network that you may find us. We want to welcome you and to tell you that we love you. And thank you uh, uh, for tuning in. Hallelujah. And we cease not to pray for all those who are in the front line in this pandemic uh, of COVID-19. That the Lord will preserve your going in and your going out. And that the Lord will bring healing to those who are already infected. Uh, we pray for speedily recovery according to Isaiah uh, 58 verse 8. That your health will spring forth speedily. And we also pray for those families that have lost their loved ones during this time, uh, 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 be it through the COVID-19, be it through any other uh, way, be it accidents or any other sicknesses uh, that has taken our loved ones. We pray for God's comfort that the Lord will comfort you. And those who are believers and have gone to be with the Lord ahead of us, we know it's just a, a, a short while we shall soon meet again when uh, uh, Yeshua comes to rapture the church to take us home and we will be there where there will be no parting anymore. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the, for the session today? Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm ready. Amen. Say, neighbor, glory. Glory. A shout again, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm so excited on this kind of a message today whereby we are looking at understanding the end times. Because we are there, whether you like it or not, whether you are a theologian or not, whether you are a believer or not, whether you are a, a, a Bible scholar or not, the world is winding up. Amen. This, this world is really coming to a close. These are the end times. Yeah. You, you, you may want that ah, it won't end. It's ending. Every sign is there showing us it's really coming to a close. And, 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 and I'm, I'm so challenged when I see believers uh, uh, not wanting to understand these times we are living in and not to prepare for the life after this one uh, as if, if we are preaching such messages, it's like it's an escape uh, 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 theology or, or we want to escape from planet Earth. And may I tell you good news. Everyone is escaping anyway. Even the secular world is escaping they know that this world is ending anytime soon that's why as i'm speaking right now uh, a robot is in mass in the uh, in the reddish planet in mass trying to check if there is life in mass because people want to escape they can see this is winding up this is coming to an end but we must understand what time of the night is this but i want to tell you there is coming a day where the believers shall be caught up and it's sooner than we are expecting and please follow this message through don't break it so that you understand it better it's a series it's, it, it won't answer all our questions in one day especially in this session where about it's all about 30 minutes and we are looking at a subject that is about uh, 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 five hours going and you will know that we'll just be touching uh, uh, the surface and please join us in the next session whereby the time is longer whereby we'll be digging more on this subject but don't miss it even next Sunday even the other Sunday so that you follow it through hallelujah there's this song it's a special song I want us to minister to somebody before I preach right now no no if you can come and minister the song to us there is coming a day and it is sooner than you are expecting there is coming this day amen there is coming a day when no heartaches shall come. Oh, yeah. oh, to show you. No more clouds in the sky. Woo. No 
Restricted to enter some places, be it shopping, buying, selling, be it in public gatherings, and even this church. There are all signs everywhere no mask, no entry. And all is termed a new normal. Bible readers, scholars of the Bible, or ordinary people need to ask some critical questions. How can something that is abnormal be said it is new normal? It's an abnormality for a human being to be on a mask and above that and not to be allowed to enter some places in the name of controlling the spread of the COVID-19. We can only get answers from the Bible to understand what is happening and what is all this about. Is it a mark of the beast? Are we being prepared psychologically to accept the mark of the beast without even putting any resistance on it? I wear my mask. Today we have accepted the mask, even we are so accustomed to them that we are even branding them because we are so excited about it. But do we really think beyond it? What's the message of the time? Do we understand these days? Do we understand the times? And all we'll get from the scriptures as we study the word which has answers. When something that is abnormal is turned new normal, we gotta ask ourselves, just like in Isaiah 21, 11 to 12, whereby the prophet was asking the burden against Duma. He called to me out of fear and say, Watchmen, what of the night? Do you understand? What night it is? Watchmen, what of the night? Watchmen, what time is the night? And the answer comes in verse number 12. Anybody he's saying, The watchman said, The morning comes, and also I see another night. If you will inquire, inquire, return, and come back. The morning is coming, which is the day of the Lord. That the psalmist has just sang and then encourage us about that glorious day that is coming but what is the day of the lord coming we get an answer from the book of romans chapter 13 verse 11 to verse number 14 romans chapter number 13 verse number 11 if you can give us faster romans chapter 13 verse number 11 to verse number 14 we get an answer one of the night and then he says as the apostle paul brings an enlightenment 
on the issue of the night. And he says, I want to read from the King James Version. I think something. The King James Version, the Bible reads, Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. Then he says, And that knowing the time, that now it is nigher time to awake out of the sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Somebody may be asking, but are we already saved? What are you talking about, Paul, when you're saying our salvation is nearer? Salvation is in three dimensions. We were saved when Christ came, and we are still saved from men even today. And we are going to be saved when the mortal being changes to immortality. When the day of the Lord comes, when we are being caught up, that's a great salvation of the body whereby mortality is swallowed up through immortality. And we are going to be with the Lord forever and ever as we are leaving this planet. Then he says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, nor in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to verse number 8. Whereby we are going to focus more as we understand the end times as our message. Now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua. And by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by the word, nor by letters as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, I want to watch something. For that day shall not come except there comes a falling away first and that the men of sin be revealed the son of perdition who is the antichrist who opposed and exalt himself above all that is called god and that is worshiped so that he as god seated in the temple of god showing himself that he is god remember you not that when i was yet with you i told you these things and now you know what withholds this antichrist that he might be revealed in his time. Yet the mystery of iniquity or the spirit of antichrist is already at work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then the wicked one will be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. I want you to notice something in this verse. In verse number three, let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, the great day, shall not come except they shall be falling away. And the son of perdition, the son or the man of sin, is revealed who is the son of perdition there are two major events that must happen the first one is a great falling away then the second one is the son uh, of perdition being revealed now between the two things there is another event that must take place it is called the rapture you can you will not find the word rapture in the bible but it means simply in English, it means to be caught up. As according to 1 Thessalonians 4, from verse 16, where it talks about being caught up. 
and according to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 to verse 54 whereby we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye and in the book of philippians 3 verse 20 to 21 now i want just to take you back through the phases of history when the apostle paul was speaking to the believers they were now believing that the second coming was already there because they were being persecuted they have seen more scriptures being fulfilled in their eyes they have seen jerusalem being destroyed they have seen uh, uh constantine taking over the church they have seen many things many things happening the church going under tribulations and then now they were saying is this the end of the times and i want to declare to us the end of the times started from there around 25 a.d and now we are at the last of the last days we are at the end of the end as we are wearing our masks today we are not the first one to wear them in 1918 when the spanish flu took over the world through a surprise after the world war people were encouraged to wear masks so that they prevent the spread of that spanish flu but the people of that day they rebelled they refused and about 500 million of them were infected and history records that about 50 million perished during that time 2003 there was SARS and it was discovered around mid-feb again the mask way brought to the people let's try to prevent but now when we come to COVID-19 there is a change a bit in the strategy we wear the mask not to spread COVID-19 and we still say wear your mask protect your friends protect others but now this has come and it is now aligned with the economy of the world that now says when you don't wear it you cannot buy you cannot sell when you wear it you cannot enter into some other places there are other times when they were wearing it they were able to buy even if they didn't wear it they were able to maneuver in life but now in this dispensation or in this time the restrictions are there and the restrictions are economically based and it's now taking us to the book of revelations that when the peace comes in revelation chapter 13 he comes to control the economy and then he says no one can buy no one can sell without the mark of the beast now the bible says where we are there shall be a great falling away now the great falling away that comes as we are going to go back to the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 9 to 13 the great falling away is in four dimensions or in, in four dimensions number one it is a defection from sound doctrine we have never seen in the history of the church in church history how people defected from sound doctrine sound biblical doctrines everybody is coming with a new revelation and we are putting the scriptures the bible aside and we are coming with our own ideas a great falling away has come people are moving from a sound doctrine to another gospel these are the days whereby christ is no longer preached him crucified him being resurrected him coming these are the days whereby we are entertaining ourselves these are the days whereby when you speak about holiness people are saying don't judge me we are in the days whereby grace has been abused as if grace 
is all about to live anyhow. Yet grace teaches us not to sin. Sound doctrinal issues are being sidelined. And it is telling us we are winding up. These are the last days. The great falling away. The great falling away, it is talking about the defection of assembling of the saints. There has never been in a history whereby voices that says you should not gather. When the lockdown came, it made the whole world to be understand still. One of the things that was were there, nobody go to school, nobody go to anywhere, and above all, nobody goes to church. And then Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 25 was put into a test. Whereby Hebrews says, Don't forsake the assembling of to uh, assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. The great falling away has come. To say, no, it is okay to be in your own house. You don't need to assemble. You don't need to fellowship with others. Actually, you alone in your house and with God, it's okay. And it is destabilizing the Bible and what the believers are called for that we may be together in one there is no other time in history where a history of the church whereby we have seen believers fighting each other christians versus christians and matthew spoke about it so clearly as he writes in the book of matthew chapter 24 jesus was speaking about it in verse number 10 he says and there shall be many offended and they shall betray one another and they shall hate one another and he was not speaking just to the unbelievers speaking to us believers many are offended the church is wounded people have hurt each other in the house of the lord and others decided to stay at home. I'm not going to that church. They are betraying one another. In the social medias. In the TV programs. There is no other time whereby even pastors are preaching against other pastors. Church members are fighting the backlist of, of, of pastors. We are selling each other out. And the world is watching us. We are not a united front. Yet Jesus prayed in John 17, one of his prayers, and he said, Oh, that they may be one, as we are one. But instead of being one, we are killing each other. We are selling each other. We are crucifying each other. We are, let, we are gossiping each other. We are disturbing them, uh, each other. Others are no longer coming to church because somebody said this to me. We hate each other. And I know somebody will say hate is a strong word, but it is. Because many will not come now to it somebody's church you know the church the body of christ is not a united front again it's the great falling away number three the great falling away it talks about the destabilizing of church governments there is no time in the history of the church whereby we have seen the leadership the the simple message of owner in the church has been abused to control people and the people who are being controlled they are rebelling and the government of the church has been put to a great test we have seen even members of churches taking their own leaders into the worldly courts we have seen pastors taking each other to court to settle their own disputes outside of the church 
because they no longer recognize the leadership the hierarchy in the church he's a great falling away number four the great falling away it talks about holy life being not the standard again in the house of the lord this generation is a judge me not generation allow me to live anyhow if somebody comes and preach about holiness he was that one was talking about me it's a great falling away and the church does not even understand that these are the last days the spirit of the lawless one is already in operation and today as we start this series I just want to pause a question to us. Let us critically think. Is it the end? Or we still have 20,000 years to live? And somebody who is a smart, a smart fool will always say, we are not going to die. We are, see, we are dying. Come to see what's happening. There is nobody now who is living to beyond 120 years. The last one who was the eldest died at 112 years just in 8 May 2020 this year. And then there's a, he was the eldest with all the precautions, with all the medical things. But we are still dying. The world is winding up. We are at the end of the end. And soon than we are expecting, he shall come. Before the son of perdition is revealed. Now look at verse number. Six. Now we know what we hold that he might be revealed in his time the one who is now blocking the coming of the antichrist in full force he's the church but watch this the great falling away has already started you know so when, when when we were in lockdown many people many people i'm not talking about only at high praise in the world many people they lost their faith. Great falling away. Many people, they said, ah, it's better to be at home. <laughs> the falling away has happened. Now the one thing that must happen now is that the trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ rise first. The mortal body takes on immortality. We'll go home to be with the Lord forever. And if you are not believing that we are going home, I must tell you, even the world is believing that they are going somewhere. That's why now they are preparing life in mass because they have seen this world is coming to an end. Verse 7, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. I'm closing with this more, with this verse this day. As we want to continue next Sunday. The mystery or the spirit or the things that have prepared the platform for the Antichrist to be revealed are already in operation. Number one is lawlessness. The stage has been set. This is what may happen in the next few years. As people are economically challenged, many people will rise up to fight. Fighting for survival. There will be lawlessness at its highest level that we're going to see in these few days coming. And as we are 
all in our mask and in everything that we are doing can't we see that it is already the spirit in operation we are not even resisting it we are allowing it i'm not saying we must know we must resist it it has to be it has to come the world has been prepared for these great men coming the son of perdition the, the stage is set when now you cannot go into a place and buy without a mask it simply says especially the church you know the church is the more they are so compliant we are compliant we comply more even than non-believers such that it makes me think that if the mark of the beast is released officially most of the church believers will take it first we are complying so well and let us comply but don't forget we are going the spirit of the lawless one is already in operation these things have been put into place i've just showed you spanish flu in 1918 it was there the sars it was there the swine flu it was there now in covid 19 it is there but now the additional part is now that saying you don't go to buy you go you don't go to sell you don't go to fellowship without the mark which is exactly revelation 13 verse 16 and 17 exactly and now where we are any day from now we may be caught up the falling away has happened the son of perdition is about to be revealed we are in the middle in the middle what will happen we will be caught up are you ready have you received christ time for playing church is over time to just be a member of your church is over time to be known in church and time to be known by your pastor is over time to want to please your pastor is over it's time you make up your mind accept christ as your lord and savior soon it may be today after this message it may be tomorrow it may be next year but very very soon we'll be going home are you ready close your eyes wherever you are i want to pray to continue next sunday are you ready his eyes his hands are open wide saying come ye who are heavily laden i will give you rest time is up are you ready if you have not yet given your life to jesus wherever you are to christ i want to pray with you quickly as you pray with me say father, father i come before you i come before you. i accept, I accept christ, christ as my lord as my lord and my savior and my savior today today i give my life i give my to him, to him alone. alone i will serve you, I will serve you with all of my heart with all of my soul with all of my strength and i shall wait, I shall wait for that great day, that great day the day of your coming the day of, your coming, the day of the lord, the day of the lord. I, thank I thank you for receiving me for receiving and for washing my sins and, and, sins, and for making me whole and today, and today, I'm ready I am for, your coming. for your coming. In Yeshua's name, Yeshua. I, pray. I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, please assemble with other believers. Don't listen to a voice that says, it is okay to be where you are. It's not okay. Assemble with others. Be pastored. Have somebody who will father you. Have somebody who will guide you who will teach you the rudiments of faith as you grow. Can we all lift up our hands wherever you are, be it you are in your sitting room, be it you are in your bedroom, wherever you are, as we receive this benediction for today. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. Yeshua favor you. Amen.
may the Lord give you understanding of the times. Amen. May the Lord open the eyes of your understanding to know what time is it. Amen. You are blessed with an irreversible blessing. Amen. It is well with you in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Goodbye. We love you. See you next Sunday as we continue to understand the times. A big God bless you. Hallelujah. What a day. What a day. Let us all stand on our feet. Oh, yes. When I look upon his face, the one, the one who saved me by his grace. By his grace.